Yeah, I just got the alert. Yeah, I just got the alert coming. All right. <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechab, Wadash, and double honors unto the apostles. And that was a great millstone. And peace and blessings to all you out there who pushing his word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as all you believers out there who believe in the gospel, it kind of the water. And uh, hey, and um, there's a couple of brothers from the great mist on uh, you know, Houston camp and brother Cora Abad. You know, we got the beloved Elder Taza Pa, and um, again, you know, back with another Thursday live, the Wadi Al Bashim Al Shai, and Shalom Tala Akim Akwa for who want to come and boy, uh, who may be tuning in. And um, as you see from the title, it says Thursday live in time signs. It's happening all over again in various topics, you know, which, again, man, as we've been saying for the past couple of weeks, a lot is going on and which is a lot of, is a lot to keep up with. And brothers ain't going to hit the same things, but it is a lot to keep up with. And that's the beautiful thing about this truth is that we was promised that we was going to see a lot of things, many different calamities here in the end of the world. So at least the Lord keeping up with his end of the bargain. And look, it's only going to get worse from here. You see, like the Lord said in 2nd Edges 9, as we see certain times and earthquakes. Oh, you just had, what is a 7.4 earthquake in Taiwan? Had had skyscrapers, look, lean to the side, man. A couple, what, a couple of weeks ago, it was over a thousand earthquakes in 24 hours over there in um, uh, Las Vegas on the, you know, yeah, over there in that area. But the Lord said, when we start seeing these things, then we shall know it is the very same time that he is beginning to visit the earth, which he created. You know, so there's a couple of things we'll touch on. Uh, Metal Ties of Power, um, Floor is yours, whatever you got, but you got it. Yeah, come on, brother. So, you know, last week we was talking about the uh, bridge collapse out in Baltimore. And uh, I said that Biden came out and said that ISIS was responsible, but I went off in saying that I misheard and mingled some other information together because I went back and actually watched the uh, the video that Redacted had put out. And uh, what, what they did say was they was uh, quoting Laura Logan. And Laura Logan was saying that Intel within the Biden administration and others outside of the Biden administration, right? They were saying that it was a terror attack, but never named the culprit. So um, yeah, ISIS, as far as we know, had nothing to do with that, uh, the bridge collapse out in Baltimore. You know, but more and more is coming out with it being foul play and, uh, that's in my opinion, it was foul play. When you look at the video, you watch the uh, video, you, you see the boat turn into the actual pillar or pylon. So, and then you had two minutes of the black box info missing at the key critical moments from uh, 125 a.m. to 127 when the collision took place. Those vital key two minutes was missing from the black box. So it's just a lot of uh, just things that are not lining up, things that don't add up with that situation. But I just wanted to make the clarification because here at Great Millstone, we do pride ourselves in having 100% truth, all right, in the scriptures and out of the scriptures. So whether it come to breakdowns, or um, just reporting on the news. We have to be right and exact. So, you know, I'm locking in myself, doubling my efforts to make sure that uh, what I report and what I speak on is 100% truth. And if anything come out to where I wasn't um, on point or I went off, 
do well in, in being a man of integrity and a man of humility, I'll come back and tell you, you know, I was wrong. And in, in that case, I was wrong. So, you know, it's all about this truth brings us into manhood. Being a man is about being accountable. All right. Not just saying shit and not standing behind it. And now, you know, Jake and the world like to talk about standing on business because that's just the thing to say. And that's all it is. It's just a, a catchphrase that motherfuckers think it sound cool to say. But as men, we really have to stand on, you know, um, I have to go back to Scarface. As a man, all you have is your word. You know, and ergo your reputation. But I don't want to uh, just ramble on on that. But yes, uh, still no one has been held responsible or named as a culprit. So yeah, it didn't have anything to do with ISIS. You know, and that just come from me trying to uh, uh, multitask and not being really locked in. So. You got it, Doc. You there? Oh, so like I was on mute. I said, okay, come. I said, uh, yeah, let me grab a precept and we can hop straight into it. Uh, this second address, let's we'll start at eight. This second address, eight. I'm going to jump down. The second edge is eight. And verse, verse six, it says, but they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. And we send a lot of that now. Our people are thankful for the Lord giving us this truth back and many other things. So therefore, it says verse 61, and therefore is my judgment now at hand. Verse 62, these things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me. So there's a, a conversation between the Lord and Edris. And Edris responded right here. So he said, behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou will begin to do in the last times. But at what time thou hast not showed me? So the Lord told Ezra, look, not everybody know what's about to come here in these last days, but you and a few other men like you. Well, look, we was let in on, on that secret, man. Hey, consider ourselves blessed. And Ezra said, look, exactly what time is this going to happen? Second Ezra 9 and 1. This is the Lord's response. Verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. I ain't gonna, so in other words, I ain't going to tell you, you got to watch Ezra and see the times. See when these things that I showed you going to happen. Same thing for us. That's how we know it seemed like a simple little article or, you know, these signs in the heavens. Like I said, one in a lifetime comet, you know, you bring your family out with all the, with, you know, the, the what's the uh, the glasses you got to get to look at the solar eclipse? You know, you mm -hmm. bought the glasses for all your family and taking pictures of it and on, on Instagram. You see everybody taking pictures. Come on, man. Like it's some type of highlight in life, which it is, but it's for judgment, though. These are the things for judgment. These people, they think it's for good. Just, uh, oh, Mother Nature just so beautiful. No, these are signs the Lord said to look for before he going to bring judgment. So it says, he answered me then and said, measured out the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, man. And one of the signs that we were told to look for is a couple of things we'll touch on it today. You know, the plagues coming as Egypt on Egypt as before. The Lord sending um, cicadas on the same day as the, uh, the eclipse. These ain't just random events that's taking place. And I read this last verse and we can get into it. It says, therefore, 
when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. The end is, is clear we at the end of the world. And one of these articles is going to say that. I think it's this one. This article that was put out from Natural News. It was titled CERN, which that's another thing that's going on. They turned CERN on again. <laughs> You know, they, so at the time of solar eclipse, all these other signs and cicadas or cicadas, cicadas coming, swarming the earth. They're going to turn on CERN, uh, CERN again. Let's get, you know, let's see, particles collide. Let's see if open up some portals. You know, but is in this one, they even mentioned Jacob's trouble in this article. Everybody know what time it is. So the Lord said the end is manifest. It's clear we're at the end of the world. So all these events we're seeing is not a coincidence, man. You got anything to comment before we happen to the uh, these uh, articles, videos? I got a precept to go with Kinda that. Got it. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. All right, so with the times we come into... As the brother just mentioned, Jacob's trouble and, and all of the uh, chaos, upheaval, and uproars that it's going to bring, the righteous are going to be saved out of that, all right? And the righteous will be rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of their ability. So again, whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment because to every purpose there is time and judgment therefore the misery of man is great upon him all right so being wise is to look at the clues pay attention to the signs that's being showed all right knowing what's going on around you ephesians tells us uh ephesians 4 Ephesians 5 tells us, I'm going to grab it real quick. I'll read it for um, you, 5 and 15. Right, right. I, I got it right here. Hey, um, well, I started 14. All right, yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. And Masiach shall give thee light. All right. And uh, we know that Yahweh Shai is that light. He is the light of the world, the world of Israel. So in verse 15, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So as we just read, all right, a wise man's heart discerned both time and judgment. So you're going to be circumspect. Not being ignorant as to what's going on around you or in the world, the world that you live in. You're going to be aware. You're going to be awake. You're going to be conscious to the very things that, that are taking place because those things, whether you know it or not, will affect you. Just as the bridge collapse will affect you, just as these open borders are going to affect you, just as the gun grab that they're getting ready to uh, just come down on. All it, all of these things affect you, all right? And it's a it's a term, death by a thousand cuts. All right, so they just nicking away, nicking, nicking away an American or uh, Babylon, and you Babylonians are bleeding out. You know, as the scriptures say, marrying, giving in marriage, eating, drinking, but you bleeding out. Trying to ignore the fact that you know <laughs> you you being brought into a a um, a dystopian slavery type of uh, future. So you should be walking circumspectly, all right. Not as fools, but as wise. Verse sixteen says, "Redeeming the time because the days are evil." All right, meaning making the most of these times. And how do you make the most of these times? If you're a Hebrew Israelite, 
you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans predominantly, especially here in America, but wherever else you may be throughout the four corners of the globe. You redeem the time by repenting. Coming back to Yahweh Shai and uh, getting baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You know, if it's for you to, to, to get that. And then you walk in his law, statutes, and commandments to the very best of your ability. All right. And that's how you redeem the times. Because remember, we also just read back in Ecclesiastes that whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. So for all of the years you lived as, as wicked as a heathen, the Lord have mercy on you and grant you grace to come into this truth, walk in it to the very best of your ability, redeeming or buying back the times that you were wicked. So that was pretty much it. I <clears throat> Come. Got one quick one. Sirach 5 and 15. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or in a small. So kind of hitting on what you were just saying. It, to mm -hmm. be in circumspect, watching for everything. Because look, everybody going to pay attention to the big news when something happens. But who going to pay attention to the little things, the details? Everybody going to pay attention to what, what they doing with, with, with Diddy. Right, yep. P, P Diddy, but who gonna pay attention to the little things they signed and put into place and events that went on with the governments behind the scenes of these uh, uh entertainment events, man? And they throwing in people's faces, you know. So it says Sarah yep. 5 15 again. Be you, you had something? No, no, you, you good. I kind of says, Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter. Or in a small. So even in the matter, it says don't, don't be ignorant in it. You know, but um, so we can hop into it. So so in this first one, make sure we screen all good. All right, kind of see your brother got a preset. We'll we'll get that real quick. Strive for master is one four four. So rock seven, I mean second Ezra seven and twenty-one. It's a good one. It says, For the most high Yahweh have given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment right everybody being told everybody being told what to do how to walk to observe judgment here in these times you know the, uh, the saying um basic instructions before leaving earth right the lord told us what to do uh, he sent his prophets out that's how he's speaking he sent his prophets out they letting us know this info, this news, just like in Luke 16. He said, look, they hear, look, here Moses and the prophets, they got them. So everybody, look, everything is known. Everything is known. What's going on? Right. Nobody going to have no excuses, man. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What we'll hap we'll hap we'll hap we'll hap to it? Um, so this first one is from End Time Headlines. Now it says, once in a lifetime, Comet, the the mother of dragons will pre precede the solar eclipse. So it's not just that you got the eclipse and at the same time you got the eclipse. Remember they said at the same time you got the eclipse, all the planets going to be lined up in our solar system. Everything will be lined up at the, at, at the same time. At the same time, you got this eclipse and then add on the mother of dragons, man. A, a, a green comet. Let's read a little bit. So it says, before Monday's solar e before Monday's solar eclipse happens, eagle eye eagle eyed glazers sky sky glazers will have a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a rare green comet dubbed the mother of dragons in a night sky. And I thought it was funny too because even the name it made me think of Esau, the mother of dragons. You know, it's two two different. Titles that was given to Esau in the scriptures, you know, the, the mother of harlots, you know, uh, the, the dragon in the scripture. You see the lady of kingdoms, you see, but it says, uh, according to astro astronomers, Comet 12 Pines Brooks is viewable 
at night from the Northern Hemisphere in early April. It says, larger than Mount Everest, it should appear as a green blob with a hazy tail as it makes its first visit to inner solar system in 71 years. And I'm wondering, all these things happen, either they have biblical proportions or haven't happened in a long time. And now all of a sudden, they just happening at once. Never happened before at once, ever in world history, but now it's happening, right? Because we're in that time like never before. And this is the beginning of things. The Lord is showing, look, he had the dough, man. So it says, I read a little bit. It says, just a little bit more, and I, we can move on. It says, to see the comet, 12 pine brooks look westward in a nice, the night nice sky and find a constellation of stars known as Aries, the ram, which forms a loose V-shape. <laughs> It says over the next, and it's funny because even what he's saying is because uh, it's the the dragon, right? The mother of dragons. That's like and that's a, a couple Esau code names. But even where it's traveling through, that's even symbolic names of Esau characteristics in the scriptures. You see, it says it finds the constellation of stars known as the Aries Ram, which forms a loose V shape. Over the next few weeks, it will keep moving west toward Orion, right? And west, the, the constellation that looks like the great mythical hunter. Esau, man, the, the, the great hunter. It says the comet can now be found in a constellation of Aries, which is visible in the early evening over the west. Gregory Brown, astronomer at the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, told Daily Mail. And it kind of goes on, you know, uh, kind of mentions some other things. But again, these are all signs, and it's not just a coincidence that it's happening at the same time. These are the events going on. But uh, you got some for that, Otaza Pop. Now we can go to the next one. Okay, so. <clears throat> So let's play this one. Now, I seen the elder in the oh, my bad. I, was, I, was, I was on mute, brother. Okay, Kyle, you got but it. I was saying, you know, for America, this is the, the handwriting that's on the wall. All right. Um, that comment is going to pass through a few towns. I believe, well, they, they say in seven towns named Nineveh, you know. And when you go into that history, Jonah went to Nineveh. And, you know, after he tried not to, the most high, you know, made him go. And uh the towns, there's, there's some a town in Texas called Jonah, and seven different towns between Texas and Oklahoma that's called Nineveh. Well, Nineveh, you know, that was the sign that they was given was Jonah the prophet. Mm. And then the Most High, they, they repented. The Most High gave them a little time. Then Babylon came and took them down. Mm -hmm. But Babylon was given a sign. And that was that, that apparition, you, you know, that was shown to, uh, uh, shit, uh, Belshazzar, Nimrod's grandson, who was ruling at the time, that his kingdom was up. So the, the most high, he'll, he'll give signs like that. And that's all this is, is, is just a sign, you know? Um, I'm going to go here to Jeremiah 10 and 2. It says, Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. All right, and yeah, like you say, everybody's going to be going get glasses, and look how pretty it is. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But it's saying be not dismayed or, or caught all up. Just understand what this is and know what this is about. All right. This is signaling something. And what is signaling signaling is an end of a an, an error. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this is any, you know, this is this is major because. The kingdom of righteousness is coming, you know, something that hadn't been seen for 13,000 years. Or 
somewhere, somewhere 12 to 13,000 years, all right? And I ain't talking about the comet, but I'm just talking about where righteousness rules the earth. That hadn't happened since Adam transgressed in the Garden of Eden. So we're going back to that and then some. All right, so you think the Lord ain't going to, it's not going to be these astrological and, uh, you know, these these, these signs of the Heavenly Father getting ready to do something big. But, uh, yeah, that's that's all I had to say on that. You know, this this is a sign of the, of the fall of, of not just Esau, but of wickedness. Not that wickedness is going to just totally disappear, but righteousness is going to rule the earth. Right now, sin is ruling. And that you can read about that in Romans 8. For the, uh, the creature was made subject unto vanity. Matter of fact, brother, let me grab that real quick. And then... Uh, you can get back to that. Okay. So here, this is uh, son of a gun. All right, Romans chapter eight. Let me start at verse twenty. All right, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty. For the creature, which is mankind, man, that which was created. All right, for the creature was made subject to vanity. Meaning sin, going off, transgressing the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. So for the creature was made subject to vanity. Subject meaning under, sub is under or beneath. Jet goes back to rule. All right. So the creature, mankind, was made subject, put under the rule of vanity, sin. And transgression. And it says not willingly. So it's not of all will. It says, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. All right. So that we was made subject to vanity so that we could have our hopes in these days in the most high's only begotten son. All right. And, and that's going to be big. So just as the Lord went out. He went out with an eclipse. So why wouldn't he come back with an eclipse? You know, just some food for thought. You got it out. Come. That's it. He told what he tell the disciples in Acts. Why stand you gazing? That's it. <laughs> they the same matter way you can. Fact, brother, matter of fact, <laughs> now I got to get that. But, but um, you know, again, there's nothing wrong to watch it. Just don't get caught up in all the hype and they talking about, you know, this is a lot of hype surrounding this. The only hype you need to be concerned about is the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shah mm -hmm. All right. Um, that's the only hype that you need to be, be worried about. So, uh, Yeah, I'm getting that verse. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to start at If I can add real quick, are you getting the right. even, even it's like Go ahead, I, go ahead. I say even speaking of hype, because I know everybody know about uh, April 8th, you know, Monday, April 8th. What time is crossing? Like, like soon as it crossed the path, like after it crossed the path, like all hell just gonna be breaking loose, you know. And right. every path you cross, and just sirens gonna go off, and the purge sounds, and your phone's gonna go out, and just you hear the sounds in heaven and see the chariots, you know. Matter of fact, the when I just talk about the lesson, how April eighth or the solar eclipse, uh, it ain't the end of the world. Cause look, some something, or should I say, nothing 
may not happen on that day. It might be a nice little beautiful day the Lord have outside. You know, clouds in the sky, birds chirping. Even the next day, then look, the whole week may be nice after that. All, all the time, the whole two weeks after that. But something going to happen from these events occurring. It's not just going on, man. Yeah. It's I'm not just you said going that. on. You got it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, brother. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So he's saying, you know, the Lord is going to come back in the chariot. But yeah, that's 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 right. That that eclipse don't mean something might happen, or that is we know it's not going to be the end of the world. But we gauge by prophecy, so we don't know the exact time. But the Lord gave us signs through prophecy, and what we should look for to know that the time would be near. All right, and just as those planets are lining up, the prophecies also are lining up mm -hmm. to point to yeah, how is Shah coming back? <clears throat> so yeah, I, go ahead, brother. Uh, and real quick, I remember a couple years ago, because you mentioned the writing on the wall in Babylon, but a couple years ago, I remember uh, the other day, Ashwama did a video on it, how CERN, CERN actually got a sign from the Most High. You had one of these scientists, you know, stick his head in the reactor, as I'm gonna read here, in the reactor, and it gave off a particle or um, uh, I guess a symbol. And the symbol meant tackle. Yeah, tackle. yeah, yeah. You know, tackle, yeah. which again, that's in the scriptures. I'm going to read this real quick. It says. Yeah, I forgot uh, about that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, what we're saying, look, we got an article. Let's go kind of mention certain we don't get too much into it, but it says real quick, message to did he it's like it, message to the elites from CERN. It says Tekel. It says seven years ago, just a wonderful message from William Mount. It says, seems like a CERN scientist stuck his head in the reactor and got bopped with a particle. Now he is getting multi-dimensional messages. They think they reach God. Check this out. They got one word back. Tackle. Mm. Tackle. Let's 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 go in a tackle for some who That's heavy, right? Mm -hmm. That's heavy because um you got some people that that um are liking CERN to the Tower of Babel. But we know that uh well, shit, we don't know. It ain't much that we know about that tower, but that it was it was important enough for the Lord to come down to earth and shut it down, whatever it was. You know, we you know they didn't build the actual tower that that was going to reach to heaven, but you know that's neither here nor there. It's just. Uh, you know, some hearsay, but some people do say that's that's the uh, modern day Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you got it, Doc. Real quick, and speaking of these sciences and these signs of heavens and the heavens, I got a quick precept. This is Isaiah forty-seven and the in eleven. Now I'm gonna go to verse twelve, and it's going into America's judgment. It says, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, 
wherein thou has labored from thy youth. And it's the Lord, you know, kind of, you know, talking this stuff right here. You know, at the time he was going to start sending these plagues and judgments, you know, and, um, you know, Esau won't really have an explanation, but, you know, Esau will pull anything out and give a scientific ex uh, uh, explanation to send Fauci on the camera and say something. <laughs> but the law, this is the thing, the law going to be getting busy in the times we're coming into, well, what are you going to do? And it will be no explanation for it, man. Just like in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a time Pharaoh and his um, magicians looked good because they was mimicking everything Moses and Aaron was doing. But it came a time to where they couldn't continue it, though, man. They couldn't just give an explanation on, oh, well, we can do that, too. No, we can make water turn into blood, too. The most high took it to the next step. And they had to tell Pharaoh, look, we can't do that. This is from the hand of God, man. Well, so now we go get into the times to where... Esau, he ain't gonna better get on TV and tell people, look, everybody, don't be alarmed. This is just a, a meteor that's that's supposed to hit. And we live, no, the Lord gonna start to do things in the earth. So he's saying, Isaiah 47 and 12, stand down with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to prevail. If so be, thou so like, if so be, thou may be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. So they look at doing the CERN like it's going to help. You see, uh, got all these sciences working overtime to, to, to see. And we'll touch on it a little bit in this article. If anything goes on, well, none of that's going to help, man. I'm going to read this verse and we can hop into it. It says, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsel. So see, everything that's going on in the heavens right now, Esau working overtime. The scriptures just say they're wearied in their counsels. They can't yeah. agree. They're trying to see at the same time, you got this, you got over a trillion cicadas that's coming in the same path. What is this What is this saying? What is this a sign of? They don't know. Another end time prophecy, as the law was exposing Edom, he was also going to take the wisdom away. So they working overtime again. Not on the same page. But it says, thou art weary in the multitude of thy counsels. Now let thy astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from the things that... <laughs> Come on, the Lord is spot on. Yep. Come on, man. And save thee from the things that shall come upon thee. So you have these people looking in the heavens and giving this explanation. Oh, yeah, it's been 75 years. Yeah, oh, 100, over 100 and some years. Oh, this is why these two groups of cicadas merging together to make. You don't know these signs from the Lord. You just saying stuff. Come on, man. But you got us, Aquan. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, we can go ahead. Come. So we, we hit on this one. So even before the solar eclipse, early on that day, the Lord going to start it off with a, a mother of dragons, a green comet, a green comet, mother of dragons, man. At the time, the dragons. The, uh, the, in Chinese uh, astrology, this is the year of the dragon. Apostle Tahar, he spoke briefly on that, mm -hmm. this being the year of the dragon. You know, so yeah, bro, it's gonna be this. It's gonna get deep this year because um, they moved the timeline up to have everything set in place as far as America and having that final peace for they. Uh, you know, like going into uh, Job chapter twenty when he is about to fill his belly. Mm -hmm. You know, agenda twenty thirty. That was the target, but they didn't move it to 2025. That's why you see everything moving, because they know, pursuant to Revelation 12 and 12, that, 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 that the time that they have is even shorter than what they thought. They know this. They're not telling the people. That's why everything is like just, you know, in overdrive. With, with the borders and all these 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 stupid ass policies that they pushing that don't make any sense, mm 
Yeah, that's because they don't have time to make it make sense. So they're just doing things and it, it comes off looking, you know, tacky because they don't have time for the elaborate schemes and the, to, you know, polish it up. They just got to do it right now. So we, we about to be out of here, you know, and, and, and this is from the, the research I've been doing into DARPA. So they're saying that, yeah, they need to have everything in place by 2025. And that's going into, as you went into last week, and you're going to touch on, you know, with the whole, um, what was it last week dealing with the, um, the, the digital ID and all of that shit? Um, it's like the uh the cbdc's and all of that oh kind yep yep social credit score and all that right all of that they need that in place in america before this year is out mm -hmm. so you yeah you're gonna see this beast speak as a dragon so yeah that was it i man how they been running those cbdc trials in america I think you got Argentina. They just started one. I think I seen a brother Kaya in New Orleans. He did a lesson on it. But um, but yeah, everybody rushing it. They ain't got they ain't got time. Mm -mm. Ain't got time. That's right. You know, truth coming out at the four corners, hiding heavy. And, and like you said, and it's, it's, it's man, it's beautiful because Esau, since man, hundreds of years ago, they forefathers had these times we living in planned out. The plans they was gonna do. So by this time they figured they was gonna be to a level. Now that they here, it's it's different because they didn't expect at this time that profits profits was gonna be out like they are. The internet was gonna, you know, you know, mm -hmm. internet and TikTok and, and these conspiracy, you know, theories and you know, so all, all these things now was coming upon them. His his uh secrets being outed is too tough for him. So he's just gonna move on the world. And, nope. and truth be told, the FBI and the whole COINTEL program back in the, what, 60s and 70s, that was to keep this truth from coming out. Because mm -hmm. their stated purpose and mission was to prevent the rise of a messiah uh, among us. You know, and the messiah didn't already came, what they meant was a, a prophet. They wanted to stop this this truth from coming out because this is what they fear. And, and you brothers out there, don't think anything different. They fear you. Mm -hmm. They fear the power that we serve for damn sure. And they fear us. So there's no, no need. We don't have anything to fear from these goddamn devils because they are liars and the father of it. You know, and then the one thing I have to agree with about uh, Dick Gregory, because he said a lot of bug that shit, you know, but, you know, he didn't gone on to the spirit world. But the one thing, it ain't so much as what he said, but how he lived his life. He didn't he didn't live his life in fear of, in, in his word, thugs and punks. And, and so and I was like, yeah, that's absolutely right. So we have nothing to fear. These people are a bunch of goddamn low life thugs and punks. That's why they have to lie. That's why they have to be in the shadows. That's why they have to hide. They fear us. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. So um, so what happened to it? Uh, some more. So again, this this right here. At the same time, this eclipse, you got this comet passing called the Mother of Dragons, as the Mother of Harlots, or AKA the Dragon is ruling. So also, let's play this quick video. I'm gonna read a little bit of this article, but I'm gonna play a video and let um this Edomite talk on TikTok. So it says from Newsweek, it was put out April fourth today. Today, shit, over says over 100 trillion cicadas to emerge after the solar eclipse. 
And you got some people, some sites I've seen you said the same day, some said after, you know, it passed or day after. Nevertheless, it's going to happen. And who knows how it's going to happen. And again, why is this news? Because in 2nd Edges 15, the Lord said he's going to bring plagues on Egypt as before, the new Egypt, as he did to the old Egypt. And in the old Egypt, one of the plagues, now again, see, people think it's just a small thing. And oh, um, um, uh, 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 um, you know, Mother Nature, one of those things, like it's a simple thing just because it's, it's, it's dealing with animals and bugs and species. But remember, that was a plague in Egypt. All them um, locusts, right. <laughs> all, all those locusts. Now, it seemed like a little deal because they eat little bitty locusts. And who knows how they how they really look, you know. You know, the Lord be getting down, he dramatic with, dramatic with what he do. But it seemed like it was just locusts. Well, look at the damage it left. So it's, it will seem like it's just, just cicadas. Well, look at the damage. Oh, well, we can expect damage. They coming to do something. Whether it be out in the open or, or behind closed doors that will slowly bring damage to, to, to some gradualism. But they coming here for something. So it says, shortly after the upcoming total, total solar eclipse, another rare site to behold will occur in central eastern Midwest, as many as 100 trillion periodical cicadas are expected to come out of hibernation is what is in what experts are calling cicada getting on April 8th. The total solar eclipse, when the sun is completely blocked by the moon, then the Lord said the sun will be turning to darkness. Completely blocked by the moon will be seen across 13 states, as well as small areas of Tennessee and Michigan. The celestial spectacle is not set to reoccur or recur over the U.S. for decades, and millions of people will head to view to viewing spots to see it but after right but after that has happened two cicada populations nesting close together are expected to emerge creating a combined swarm that will dominate a large portion of the US it says periodical cicada broods develop or brudge develop over a number of years underground before burrowing up and out of all at once. It says they are then active above ground as adults for a matter of weeks before laying the next generation and dying off. You know, so I, I play I play this video. You know, it got some more. And again, every and you notice everything that's that's going on now, this is how we know that it's the Lord, the Lord doing it because. If it's a hurricane, they'll say of biblical proportions, if a lot of people died or if it's a famine and a lot of people down there, they're, they're using the terms of biblical proportions. Or if it's not terms as far as weather, it's time periods as well, because all these events that's going on is spectacles because it haven't happened in years to hundreds of years, man. But now at a, at a, at a time that we in. Everything happening at once, again, that's not no coincidence. Let's play this little vid. I've seen a quick vid. This is a TikTok. Um, we'll let Esau speak. Here you go. Shout out what I'm talking Yeah, I can't hear it, Doc. What'd you say? Yeah, I can't hear that. Can't hear? Uh-uh. Let me see. Y'all can hear on the comment board? Bible the shot, let us know. Uh, as far as, uh, let me see, I'm going to play it again, y'all. Let us know if y'all can hear it.
All right, they said no. All right, cool. Let's see. Let's do this. Um, uh, stop screen. Present share screen. All right, this should work. All right, let me let us know now. Baba Kasha. All right, cool. The water, the water. Let us know now. If y'all can hear it. If you didn't know, there are certain cicadas called periodical cicadas, meaning they spend most of millions of cicadas will be emerging from the ground. All right, can y'all hear that? Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Okay, kind of. But you kind of got Matthew 10 and 28. Let's see. There. Yeah, Shalom, yeah. I'm talking about I can. They're not him who's able to yeah. destroy the body. Kind of, yep. Matthew 10 and 28, and fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which able which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> kind of weird that coming, boy. But uh, let's finish. Let's finish it. Oh, we ain't even finished this. Real quick, going back to this little article about the CERN thing. So this this would it meant. It says, do you remember in the Bible book or in the Bible, the book of Daniel, there is a story of the downfall of Nebuchadnezzar's son. It says, son, it says Belshazzar. It says he had a huge party and invited all of the elite. And during this party in a hey, all of the elite, you know, these ones who in these secret meetings, the same thing we're reading right here. Or that happened in our times with these scientists. It says, during this party in a drunken, debauched state, they decided to open up the sacred artifacts that had been taken from the Jews. And then the Most High responded. He wrote on the wall, many, many tickle you farcin. And they didn't know what the writing on the wall meant, so they sought out Daniel. And Daniel told them, it says, you have been judged and found wanting. It says, so the message that from CERN, which is tickle, says, you have been weighed. <laughs> You have been weighed, man. So that's the sign that they had a couple of years ago. And look, now he's turning it on at this time again. Ain't no telling, mm -hmm. man, what spirit's about to, the law about to ramp up. Remember, he said the spirits that is created for vengeance. That's also in the scriptures. This is, look, again, he can use man to get things started. But let's, let's play this, though. Yeah. So that's another thing. At the same time of uh, that, uh, the eclipse. You know, right after Mother of Dragon coming. Let me see if everybody's got any precepts before that. And Shalom again to all the I came on the comment, boy. Y'all about Shema Shah broke a thumb. Shalom. Kind of Elder Kazak in there too. Shalom. Mississippi, Shalom. See you, Lamont. But uh, real quick, let's play this vid. Millions of cicadas will be emerging from the ground in the next month, and there's like this whole coincidence between that and the solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th, so now I want to share what I've learned. If you didn't know, there are certain cicadas called periodical cicadas, meaning they spend most of their life underground as nymphs and will emerge to transform into adults and mate. Some of these broods or groups of periodical cicadas will emerge once every 13 years or others every 17 years. Now, these broods are independent of one another, so they normally don't emerge at the same time, but normally doesn't mean never. For the first time since 1803, when there were only 17 states in the U.S., two broods will emerge at the same time in the same place right here on the map in Illinois. If that wasn't coincidence enough, this is the path of the solar eclipse that happened back in 2017, and this is the path the solar eclipse will have next month on April 8th. So in the same place and time that next month's solar eclipse intersects with the solar eclipse that occurred in 2017, two broods of cicadas will converge for the first time in over 200 years. That probably doesn't mean anything at all unless you're superstitious, but I just thought it was way too interesting not to share. You see? And again, these are not things that's happening by chance. Like your brother, you kind of be saying nothing is an accident or coincidence. You know, everything right. is met. <clears throat> but you got something before we hop into this next one, before we move on? Oh, no, I go here, that. All right, kind of. So we'll run through this one real quick. Now, this is from Natural News as well. And this was put out yesterday, April the 3rd. 
And it says CERN, the Vatican, and the upcoming X marks the spot, Great American Eclipse. Now, again, this is how we know everybody know what time it is. Not just the prophets singing this tune no more. The world is. Because even in this article, as I was reading, I get down to the bottom and say, what, Jacob's Trouble? <laughs> they mentioned it, Jacob's Trouble. Right. Everybody know what time it is, man. Real quick. This is, um, <laughs> it says, in an emergency broadcast that he does not, does not normally do, Mike Adams, let me highlight it. Mike Adams of the Health Ranger reported a report discuss some of the latest revelations about strange and spooky things that are scheduled to occur during the April 8th solar eclipse across the United States. In addition to creating an X marks the spot crossover with the last great American eclipse that occurred on August 21st, 2017. That crossover occurring smack dead center over the epicenter of New Madrid of the New Madrid seismic zone, the April 8th eclipse will also coincide with some strange government event that bear ominous implications. Mm. Gotta look into that. It says one of the things discussed in the video below, and I put I mean, as always, we're gonna we're gonna throw this in the chat. You know, so y'all can check it out, you know, on your leisure time. But it says, be sure to watch. It's the fact that Texas DMV announced a travel ban prohibiting size and weight permitted travel on Eclipse Day across 80 Texas counties. In short, Texas DMV is prohibiting basically all commercial trucks from traveling on April 8th in 80 Texas counties from Anderson to Zavala from A to Z. It says, have you ever heard of a solar eclipse resulting in state officials banning commercial trucks? And again, remember commercial trucks, you still got this thing just because it ain't in the news every day, warning people every day, don't mean these certain events or situations stopped. Remember these trucks that band together these Trump supporters, right? These Trump supporters, they banding together and they ain't going to certain states. That's still going on just because it's not in the news. You got these other truckers across the world, uh, mainly over there in Europe, you know, Canada, banding together, do uh, uh, protesting. All these things going to have its effects, man. Now you got New York. They stopping. Now, again, you got brothers who truckers. So they know, they know more about it, but. I'm sure one day could could put a halt to something. And it'll tell me, look, what is what's gonna happen on this day? It, it could be something. Mm -hmm. But it says uh while the travel ban means that all commercial trucks carrying things like gravel, diesel, sections of bridges, tractors, and other agricultural equipment, cattle, and groceries to grocery stores and bulk food supplies to restaurants. Restaurants will have to stop delivering on April 8th. On April 8th, no stores are going to get supplies. And you know that just-in-time delivery is a very real thing, see? So it says it's almost like Texas is causing a... And look, it's starting... The Eclipse starting over... Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the spot with the immigrants? Um... Oh, Eagle Pass, uh, Texas. Eagle Pass. Yep, Eagle Pass, Texas. It's starting over Eagle Pass, Texas, where all these Northern Kingdom immigrants at. <laughs> you see? It says. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah real quick. Uh, you you showed the uh the the trek of the uh 2017 eclipse, and then this one coming up, and how they form an X. All right, the uh, intersection of that X is uh just north of austin if i'm remembering correctly so and that's the uh capital of texas uh it's gonna be in the hill country here in texas which is you know just right there next to austin so uh yeah you're gonna see you're gonna see some shit. this is why like you brought out last week mike ranger says this 
this is Black Swan season. Mm -hmm. So they got something planned. Now we don't know what, when, uh, you know, how it's going to look, but they planning to do something. So, uh, right. And then uh, seem like Texas is going to be right at the center of it. And uh, we, we also mentioned, um, you had brought up last week, and I brought up a, a, a few weeks before, uh, you know, this is an, an election year. Mm -hmm. All right, and they had to move it purge election year. Well, the last purge was about the, the, the border, the border crisis. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, I don't believe in coincidence. There's no such thing. All of these things are coming together to spell disaster for you people here in Babylon. You know? Yeah, he, he saw, he looked into things years, decades, sometimes centuries in advance. So it's none of this just coincidence or happenstance, and it's always it just happened. Now, nah, you're getting ready to see some shit. What you got there? I... Now, I was trying to see this movie Silver War. That's, come... that's another thing, Silver War. Look, that's mm -hmm. coming out in a couple of days, next week. Next week, know what that is, yep, next weekend, Silver War. That's coming out, but what I was trying to see where in the movie is the location? Because look, in here it might be in Texas. Who knows? Yeah. You know, say they trying I to reach the White uh, House in Washington D.C. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had mentioned that uh, Joe Biden in his address, the State of the Union, a few weeks back, he kicked it off, and then uh, he mentioned. President Lincoln, and then he mentioned President Roosevelt. With President Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln resided over the Civil War, and then you had Roosevelt before he passed. Well, he took America into the, that second war. So you got to look at all of these things. <laughs> kind of, Texas is one of the main spots in the movie. <laughs> it gotta be. Yep. You know, it's down south. south. Mm -hmm. I read this real quick. It says in the near future, this so this is the movie that's coming out in uh next weekend, April 12th, Civil War. Yeah. It says in a, the premise of it, it says, in the near future, a team of journalists travel across the United States during the rapidly escalated Second American Civil War that has engulfed the entire nation between the American government, the separatist Western forces of Texas and California. The Florida Alliance, Texas and Florida, they've been in the news already separating themselves from the government, right, with these immigrants. You know, California, they, they bug, you know, it says in the news, New People's Party. So Texas is going to play a main a, a main part in this movie right here. See that? Mm -hmm. There's no coincidence. That's it. That's right. So, uh, so let's go back to this. We'll read a little bit of this. So there's something else that's happening. As the eclipse going on, Esau, a bugged out. It says another strange, stranger, an even stranger development in NASA's announcement on March 25th, which took many by surprise, about a series of rocket launches that are scheduled to occur on April 8th. So he ain't just turning CERN back on. You ain't just got the mother of comets, the mother of dragon comets that's going to be in the air, and cicadas, 100 million. And a solar eclipse, but he saw he's shooting rockets in the air at the, at the same time. Yeah, he sure is. That's right. That's right. That's right. It said, "What do you come on, man? Like, what are you putting in the man?" It says NASA is planning to launch not one 
not two, but three sounding rockets into the moon's shadow during the solar eclipse, supposedly to study the disturbances in the ionosphere created when the moon eclipses the sun, just for research purposes. Come on. You see, and it ain't no telling what they up to. There's no telling what they trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I read this little portion and we can move on and play those videos we got. So this next part of it, it says CERN, CERN to fire up satanic particle accelerator on April 8th. This also going to be going on. We're in the times to what a law going to judge Egypt again as before. We've been quoting it. Might have to get it. But plagues on Egypt as before. What's another thing that happened to Egypt? It wasn't just blackness like it's going to be with this uh, eclipse which they also talking about the lights may, might go out. But it wasn't just blackness. What's another thing? Because with this CERN, it's talking about they be opening up portals where different spirits come out. That's also what the Lord did when he judged Egypt, sent out demons, man, apparitions. We definitely in those times for this to go down again. And we in the time of the Passover. Oh, we just came out of it. But you know, a lot of camps, they had A's and had have theirs in April, which if we remember when CV hit, we had ours, but right when they was about to have theirs in April, everything was getting shut down. They weren't able to have it. So and I'm look, hoping this happened happen like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm just saying. I hope. I hope that same shit happen again. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the shutdown. Yep. And that's the next. That's the next segment we're gonna go into. Because think about it. When before that CV hit. Everybody just thought they was going to have a pass. So I remember I watched a Captain Tazarag video. It was like, yeah, send y'all money. I'm going to be selling my alls. I remember one person said, make sure you bring this this different scent. Oh, yeah, sis, I got you. Nobody thought about no CV19. <laughs> you know? I wasn't even thinking about it. You know, no thinking about it. Yep. But guess Had what? No what idea. Who? Uh, so like you got it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Uh, nah, you got it, Zakar. You got it. No, nah, that was it. That was it. The shit, of, you know the the the, uh, the big dog in the house, man. Elder Elder Atazari in here. Shalom, brother. Yeah, God, Shalom. Y'all about Shemal Shabrakata. Shalom. Khan, Khan. The brother Yakan. Psalm 64 and six. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. That's it. And a lot of these things he saw delve into is going to backfire on them, man. Just like Pharaoh and them, they kept trying to trying to do what Moses and them did, but he eventually backfired to where they, they went too far. They couldn't keep up. When it comes to where these scientists ain't going to be able to get no, the, the best plausible explanation, they will better keep up. See? But uh, I'll read a little bit of this, and then uh, we can play those two videos because the timeline matching up. I remember a couple of weeks ago we showed the timeline on the 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 the, the, the you know the pan D in January February nobody thought about a, a CV in March you started hearing signs in in Wuhan and and this person in this factory and that person in that factory because of a bat and and, and over here it would just pop ups and little here and ass. But then in the end of March and April, the whole world was shut down. This can very well happen again. We're going to play some two videos kind of hitting on it, man. But let's, let's finish out this article. So it says, CERN to fire up satanic particle accelerator on April 8th. It says, another creepy event scheduled for April 8th is the activation of CERN's large hadron or hadron collider L at HC, which has been out of commission for two years now, described as the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, CERN's LHC is scheduled to smash protons together on April 8th in an effort to search for invisible particles secretly powering our universe. Yep. 
man, it's gonna be so much going on on this day. And look, I even my hey, uh, <laughs> oh the Tyler Pye, even my my doctor's appointment got got changed to eight, April eighth. That's the first, that's the first thing I thought about. Man, it's gonna be a lot going on on that day. Yeah, See? come. <laughs> So man, you got a, a solar eclipse, a mother of all dragon green comet before that to open that day up. Esau shooting three missiles in the sky at the time it's gonna hit the darkness. And, and, and you got CERN turning on all on this day to, to, to smash protons together to search for invisible particles, sound like apparitions secretly powering our universe. That's why mm -hmm. we need that old woman. The Lord said, um uh, in higher places, but continuing on, I jump down. You know, I don't really want to get in the CERN. Oh, and it's another thing. It says the Shiva statue, and in front of it, the destroyer of worlds is out in front of CERN. It's what they got. Shiva statue, uh, right in front of CERN. If you know, I'm sure y'all seen it before. Come on, man. There we go. Check this out. Yeah, that was it. This in front of sun right here. <laughs> right there. Right there in the, in the marketplace of the, of the establishment. Yep. Yeah. Well, they turn that on too. April 8th. And again, if stuff might happen on this day, or it might be a week, a month later, but these things are not happening for no reason. But let's finish it off with this. So it says, in the conclusion of things, it says, the question is, is all hell about to unleash on earth? And before we read, the answer is, according to the Bible, yes. <laughs> and this is how we know it's that time, because they mention in the Bible now. Mainstream media mention the Bible, these, these, um, um, other people like natural news mention the Bible, man. Everybody know it. It says it's all hell about to unleash on earth. There is also speculation that April 8th, or perhaps 40 days after, if this particular eclipse is the final sign of Jonah for the wicked United States. It said here was the unleashing of hell on earth, or what Christians recognized as the great tribulation. Or time of Jacob's trouble, described in Jeremiah 30 and 7. Let's read that again. It says, there is also speculation that April 8th, or perhaps 40 days after, if this particular eclipse is the final sign of Jonah for the wicked United States. And again, this ain't going to be the final sign. This is just the beginning of what the Lord about to do to America. <laughs> this ain't the mm. final. It's like, this is like the staff being thrown on the ground. You ain't see nothing from the Lord yet, man. But what they like in these times and two, Jeremiah 30 and 7. Let's get it real quick. You got it on the ties of pie here. Page, uh, pages turning. Um, real quick, this yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah, no, I'm just uh, looking. Con. Jeremiah 30 and 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great. And I mind you, it's not just going to be one day. Yeah, April 8th, some could happen, but it's not just that day. And this scripture right here in Jeremiah 37 ain't just speaking about the, the eclipse on April 8th. It's going into the, the day of trouble, but it's going to prove it's not just one day. Jeremiah 37, it says, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Key word, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. The first, the first day of all hell break loose, people run out their houses and running in stores, and it's a run on the banks and traffic jams and, and people leaving work. When that day happened, all the way to the day of how was I come, that's the time of Jacob's trouble right there, man. And we fastly approaching that time. Everything is already set. You know. But it says, but he shall be saved out of it. And that's why we should want these things to come. We look forward to it. We look forward to salvation. That's on the other side of this. But uh, that's pretty much on this, uh, Elder Tazapai. You got something? 
No, no, you good, brother. Kind of. Um, yeah, so I will throw our listen to chat. Look, let's read this. It says some somebody said on April 8th, everything changes. One of our readers and viewers speculated about what he thinks will happen. He says the skies have never looked look like this before and never will again. So all right, it's a time like never before. And remember, Sirach 36 said the Lord gonna show new signs and make other strange wonders, man. So that's it for that portion, which um was again uh end time signs. And again, Shalom to all uh, the elders, Akim, uh Akwath on the comment boy, how about Shimel Shah Brock Thumb? Uh Shalom, brothers. Mm. Uh, I get this one real quick. Uh Obadiah one and nine, the brother um Lamada Moffat says, and thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Right? And look, even, be even before it gets to the cutoff, what it say above that the Lord gonna start taking their wisdom away. And when that time, everything being called out that they're doing, so on and so forth. You see? The light, like I said in Job, the light is being dim in a tabernacle. Mm. You know, but they, uh, Shalom to the Elder Monagon, to the Elder Manatazakba, you know. Uh, hey, you Shalom, my Kyam. Kyam, y'all bashim y'all shabarakatam. Y'all bashim y'all shabarakatam. So we'll move to this the second segment. Now, again, as we were saying, everything lining up to what it, what it was, um, or how the scene or the stage was being set for CV in 2019, going you know leading to 2020. So now I'm gonna play these. We gonna play these two videos because it's been this bird flu that's been talked about. Which again, Esau he could change names. Right now he calling it the bird flu. Two weeks or months from now he can call it something else. Remember, yeah. see, it's a lack in my son up. You know my son up in here too. So you know. And um, he ain't feeling too good. But uh, look, in CV they started off with uh, with what uh, you know, what they was calling it um, uh, what uh, Zika? Yeah, that was they they named about five things before they settled on one. But the point oh, is, okay, they, okay, you know, they was calling all kind of stuff, right? Um, uh, but they just calling it bird flu now. But it's this is this certain sickness. You know that's out, and a lot of people have been reporting on it. And they said, hold on, let me let me get them out of here real quick. And they're giving signs on how this is being built the same way that CV did. So I'll go ahead and play this video. So this is from I, Snyder. I tell you this real, real quick, I, mm -hmm. we had that little rain. I, I believe that was Monday. We had that rain, and I started feeling funny right after that rain. And I started keeping lemons at work because it should always happen at work. So I was feeling funny, so I went and gargled some lemon juice because it felt like I was about to get sick just out of nowhere, right after it rained. Uh -huh. and, and I wasn't in the rain, you know, but, um, you know, we had an open-air facility. And it's like I start, I said, God damn, uh, they, this shit is in the air. Mm -hmm. But I, I uh, gargled with that lemon juice and then I'm, uh, you know, I'm good. But yeah, man, they doing shit, bro. They they spraying shit and and doing shit. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get the, we gotta get out of here, man. But man, hey, Kahala, you how about Shimmy? I was shy for Pastor Too Hard to tell me about that lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you go over that lemon juice, man. That, and I got the whole, you know, you can't wait till it's set in. You got to get it right at the beginning. And then that, that keep you moving. Uh, yep. And speaking about them spraying stuff and all that, uh, if brothers notice, it ain't just regular chemtrails no more either. They starting to form no, X's in the sky. No, it's, it's nanotech, bro. It's nanotech. They'll say I've been doing that research on DARPA this week yeah they, they spraying nanotech and all other um toxic um elements you know like the barium and the aluminum and and other toxic elements but mainly it's the nano the you know that nanotech 
because they they want everybody infected with with this this mess the 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 um what's that the graphene oxide so that's how they're getting ready to uh really take everything over but that's a whole nother lesson brother go ahead i Okay, so I go ahead and uh, play this vid. So again, it's from Snyder Reports, and this was put out one day ago. Now it says the threat is real, the start of the next pandemic. So let's go ahead and play it. Make sure we get the sound on. Okay, come. Come, let's go ahead and play it. We are facing a real threat here in the United States, and some experts say this could be the beginning of the next pandemic. That is how serious this threat is. So today I wanna to address where this threat is coming from, why millions and millions of people are currently being told to just be prepared, understand what is coming, and understand that this might just be the beginning. So again, I'm gonna break this down in just a moment. All I ask is one thing, it takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. With experts coming out and saying that this could be the beginning of the next pandemic, I want to be very clear on something. This would be the very early stages, and here's why. This is the story. It says bird flu in Texas, and the largest U.S. egg producer temporarily shutters facility after H5N1 virus found in chickens. This is, a, this is the bird flu, okay? I want to be very clear on this. This is the bird flu. The concern here is not that chickens are contracting the bird flu. Yes, that is concerning. Egg prices are going to go up a little bit. We're going to see chicken prices go up a little bit as well because chicken and, and egg production is going to be uh, slightly decreased over a little bit of time. But the concern is that a person actually contracted the virus. It says here, Okay, this is from uh, Forbes.com. Now, mind you, I'm gonna try not to, you know, keep stopping it, but I mind you, remember when the CV started, it was one person here and now, just here and now, just random people across the world. Then it just started happening everywhere, man. Now they're talking about it's in the food. I remember Esau, he was putting that mRNA in in the meats, in the food. Last yeah. year, right in the CV. He was putting in animals, man. Article yep. says only second human case of bird flu in U.S. as global virus expands. This is the concern, is that now we could potentially see this get transferred to humans. That's the concern. That's why many people say the threat is real because of the, the interaction that like farmers have with chickens, with, with their with your know, poultry, with their, their cattle, okay? This is the concern, especially when just a couple weeks ago, we learned that uh, you know, cattle were contracting the virus. Again, that's something new. We didn't know that that was something that was going to happen. But here's the, the issue. How prepared is the United States if this bird flu pandemic were to actually hit us? How, how prepared is the United States? Well, that's what I want to get to. And I want to read you a couple of things, okay? Look at this. It says a, or the CDC and the whole U.S. government is taking this situation very seriously. We had not seen avian flu in cattle prior to last week. This is new. It's a reservoir for virus to circulate and potentially change. That's one of the concerns. And again, like I said, it wasn't until last week that we even knew cattle could contract the, the bird flu or the avian flu. And so now that they have, now, so and that's a, and that's another thing. See, so you gotta Esau do things gradualism. Now, last year it was over, man, fifty to hundreds of meat processing facilities that was burned down. You had cattle yep. that was euthanized by the by the by the numbers. Elder Tiles of Power, we talked about last week, uh, and a uh, week before, all those hundreds of cattle. And that's done in northern Texas right now and on the border of Oklahoma and all that from the, those fires. Right. 
Right. So again, it seemed that's that's why as we're centered, it seemed like small things, but all because it's so many, all of them gonna have a big impact, man. Be not and ignorant of anything. With this, brother, you, you got it, Zaquan. You got it. Just to show you how how beautiful the spirit works. All right. Um they were requiring uh the ranchers and stuff to have their livestock vaccinated. All right. Now, with that that graphene oxide thing, it's just a transmitter and a receiver of signals. So once you get that in you, they can make you have whatever they want you to have. They can all they got to do is broadcast the signal that that geo inside of you receive that signal and transmit it into your cell. That's how that shit works. So, right, when they say, oh, this is, we never seen this before. Yeah, until what? To these vaccines. This shit is changing the game. And people that got it, when we got their solution, that juice, yeah, they, that, that's why uh, CDC has uh, intel, for lack of a better term, for how to deal with a zombie apocalypse. Go back and watch the movie Cell with Samuel L. Jackson. This is what they're trying to do. Hey, brother. Wireless frequencies. Who put that? The, yeah, the that's what question. He's oh you can you got it. Look at it. Look at it. You can read it. Look at that. Uh, Shit, all the big dogs in the house. <laughs> He said, uh, I'm just having fun, man. Good to see you, brothers, man. Don't take it no kind of way. I'm just having fun, man. Yeah, Good he to said, see all you out here. I'm in the house in the okay. So he said, graphene oxide is manipulated via wireless frequencies, 5G, AI, or sudden unalives. You know? Yeah. So they they can okay. they can make you have whatever they want you to have. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to give you the um, HIV slash AIDS first, and then that's that's what you essentially have when you you went and got that shot. Your your immune system was compromised, and that's all. When you talk about AIDS, it's acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Your your immune system shuts down. So they had to do that first. So now, when whatever, because because they didn't want to have <clears throat> try to broadcast something and then your immune system shut it down. So they had to shut down your immune system, and so now whatever they decide to broadcast. That's what you have. They want you to be a zombie. They can completely remote control you when when that's when that's fully in place. And you went back and got the second and the third and the fourth. So yeah, man, it's, it's and, and this might be what they be might might be planning to set off around the eighth see we just don't know but yeah go ahead brother uh, i read the brother ties uh the brother ties a point i read this precept real quick second is 15 and 49 it says i will send plagues upon upon thee widowhood poverty famine sword pestilence to waste their houses with destruction and death and we definitely in those times so are these things about to increase. Um, so I'll play a little bit more of this video. Matter of fact, and before we play that, we mentioned the beef and dairy. And I mentioned this because it's not just people that it's infecting, but also the beef and beef and dairy. Um, also having concerns as well. So this from end time headlines. It says the bird flu, which that's just what they're calling it right now. Outbreak raising concerns that dairy and Beef demand may be impacted. 
I ain't gonna read it. I'm gonna read a little bit. It says a virus that has killed millions of birds is spreading across many U.S. dairy cows, raising concerns that the outbreak may hurt the demand for dairy and beef. While the U.S. Department of Agriculture has said there's little safety risk, the outbreak is unsettling the industry with cattle and milk prices taking a hit. Again, meat prices and milk dairy prices, they're going to take a hit. It says there's concern, there's concern some shoppers will balk at drinking milk or eating beef. You know, and it goes on to it how you know it's gonna have its effects. It mentioned Texas, even with the fires, how some cattle even in Texas got pneumonia now. Hey, we elder times are probably before the lesson. We spoke about uh well, I think it was before the lesson, or uh, when we started this lesson, the uh farmers in Europe, they also complaining of, of deaths of animals. So on and so forth. Mm. So a lot is going on, man. A yeah. lot is happening. So what you think will happen even after this uh, April 8th situation? You know? But uh, you got some other types of pop now that I'll play this next vid? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay, so this from another guy. We played him last week. His name on YouTube is This Is John Williams. He have good videos here and there, but you know, Jake be all over the place. Let me slow it down too. All right, too. But um, so he put out a video which was along the lines of the Snyder reports. The Snyder reports video. The title was "The Threat Is Real: The Start of the Next Pandemic." He put his out yesterday, and then you had John Williams. His video yesterday says it's happening. 2020 madness all over. So that's what we got for the second portion of the lesson. It's happening all over again. Now, I got this little timeline pulled up, which I'm sure is better ones. But I got this little timeline pulled up. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Because look how quick things happen. So in January, you had the mysterious illness, right? The, the, the CV. In January, it was mysterious illness. In March... So look, in February, we ain't hear nothing. In March, it said it started spreading. You know, you started getting cases here and there. But just in March, in the same month, in the same month, when the same month it started spreading, in the same month, it said what? The world shuts down, March and in April. Because look, we had our Passover at the end of, in that time, March. And remember, IUIC and these other camps had, have theirs in April. That's how quick it happened because we had ours and it happened so quick they weren't even able to have theirs, man. Yep. So we hear hearing about... The most I wasn't with us, wasn't with Great Millstone. If if we so bad and wicked and all that, wouldn't the most High have shut us down too? Mm. Think about that. The most High allowed Great Millstone to keep their Passover when a lot of camps didn't get to, the big name camps didn't get to. Why? The most high not gonna shut down those who praising him. He's gonna shut down those who speaking wrongly. So yeah, yeah, just think about that for a second. But go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. And we can see this playing out again. So look, in March, it says, so look, it says March. The, the virus spreads, cases multiply. Right, you had a cruise ship, somebody had it, a dock outside of San Francisco, a passenger in the Bay Area, the shelter in place. So now we getting we getting things of people getting it, getting this random one now. So in March, as people just started getting it in the same month, going into April, it says the world shuts down. Countries seal their borders. Sports teams cancel seasons, schools close, and employees go home, and people start wearing masks and social <laughs> distancing. Look how quick that happened. Look how quick that happened, man. And then it says an uptick, and it says people struggle financially, unemployment. And then what came? Then what came after that as people were struggling? A stimulus check. What's going to come out of digital stimulus check, man? UBI. You UB, UBI. Mm hmm Salaki. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. Universal UB. basic income. 
Yeah. So we see yeah. the plan. You got it? No, no, I, I, you got it, brother. You know, so we see the plan, but um, so I'll go ahead and uh play play this video from John Williams. See what he gotta say. John here, the largest egg producer in all of America has halted production, no longer producing eggs. Potential outbreak of bird flu. Bird flu was detected in cows in a dairy operation in and this one thing I caught, I ain't gonna try to try to not to stop. This one thing I caught watching this. Remember when CV started, you started getting little mentions of it on the news here and there, right? Just to throw it out there. That's what you that's what we seeing now. They just throwing it out there on the news. All these news channels gonna be throwing it out now. Hey, so guys, John here. The largest egg producer in all of America has halted production, no longer producing eggs. Potential outbreak of bird flu. Bird flu was detected in cows in a dairy operation in Northwest Ohio. Second time ever in the U.S. a human being has contracted bird flu. Farmers are pulling back over this massive problem that could be coming over the next 24 to 48 hours here in America. There is a highly contagious pathogen jumping from bird to cow to human. Now, one year ago, one year ago, CBS News reported February 9th, that they're working on a solution to the very problem that we now have. May 2nd, they're working on this solution, Washington Post, right? Now, if it was just this one story, you know, it probably wouldn't even be a story. I wouldn't even talk about it. But when you look at the chain of events that have unfolded, you have the Baltimore Bridge collapse, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Then you have the Ohio Bridge on fire. Then you have the Suez Canal, Panama Canal, and the Red Sea all disrupted. Those three access points equate to 30% of global trade now being disrupted. What I believe could happen next is we could see a lot of disruption in America's food supply chains and across all supply chains, pushing prices much, much higher. Jerome Powell said he will not cut interest rates unless prices come down. J.P. Morgan Chase just reported that they believe core inflation is going to be going up due to supply chain problems. What I believe could happen is we could be walking into a really, really big problem here. And as these prices go up, people are going to ignore the prices. And they're just going to look at the eyes of their children, their husbands, their wives, and say, you know what? Forget the price. We'll deal with it later. We just swipe their credit card, and uh, prices are just going to keep going up. Prices are going to keep going up, and uh, we're going to walk into a problem, potentially, according to you know all the mainstream outlets, according to you know what everybody watches, what everybody sees. Well, I'm going to get a quick pre-sub, you know, Got to let the script speak. I'm gonna get a quick precept because hard times, high prices will drive people into bugging out, man. Coming against the government. Let me get this real quick. The second edge of chapter 15. In the same chapter, in the same chapter, the law is speaking about bringing plagues on Egypt as before. Well, this what else he gonna do? Hey, look, in the same chapter, speak about formers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right there. They talk about the cattle and foremost complaining. Might as well start at 11. Second Ezra 15 and 11 in the GNT, it says, I will use all my strength and power to bring them out of that land, which is America. I will bring disasters upon the Egyptians as I did earlier, as mm. he did to the ancient Egypt. Show this another Egypt, Revelation 11 and 8. And this proves is a yeah. different one. It says, and I will destroy their country. Egypt still here today, man. Tourist, tourist attraction. It says, the whole land will be mourning. It will be shaken to its foundation when I, the Lord, strike it and pound on it. And again, a lot of these videos, that's what we're about to see. You look, complaining, the beef affected. The Lord pound on it. Bridges falling. People tripping. So hmm. continuing on, it says, and will pound on it, the formers will mourn. The formers will mourn because their seed will fail to sprout and their trees will be destroyed by blight, hail, and terrible storms. Let's get to the point. And the world and the people in it are doomed. The war that will bring their destruction is very near. It says nations will arm themselves and fight against other nations. There will be great political turmoil. That's what we're seeing right now. You got BRICS, you know, uh, even America, uh, American allies separating themselves from America. Look, you got people complaining about what Israel doing. There will be great political turmoil with one group trying to overpower another and gain control while ignoring the legitimate government. Now, check this out. 
It says there will no longer be free access to the cities. 15 minute cities, concentration camps. Look, hey, if a bridge fall, that's going to aid in cutting off cities. Now, this is the point I wanted in reading all that to show what he just said. Price is about to go up. People about to start struggling. That's what's going to make people fight back. It says there will no longer be free access to the cities because this is why. Because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live, driven by. So look, terror, total confusion, and destruction will be caused by this in verse 19. It says, the start at 18 again, so like I'm getting excited. It says, because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live. Driven by famine, prices going up, cattle gonna be dead, everything in the store is gonna be gone. The necessities of life gonna, gonna be hard to get at this time, driven by famine and terrible suffering. Time's about to get hard, so that's what's gonna cause terror, destruction, and total confusion wherever people live. Things like famine and terrible suffering. And it said, because of that, people will assault their neighbors and mercilessly plunder their possessions, man. We definitely in that time. Hmm. We definitely in that time. And then next it goes into how the Lord is calling the kings of the earth to war. That's going on in this, on as well. We ain't going to play it, but just an honorable mention right here, redacted. They put out a video yesterday. Everybody put, man, this is fresh off the presses. It says, Israel wants the U.S. to attack Iran. Dragging us into war. That's prophecy. The least of the flock drawing America out. Yes, All sir. these things are going on as, as the Bible uh, prescribed them to, to happen, man. You got some of those, Aquan? No, no, that's right. I, that's right. Okay, so I'll go ahead and play, this, play a little bit of this video again. We're going to wind it down here in a few. This is what we're all being told is coming next. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. People share the content, educate more people about what's going on in America. If you'd like to fix your credit, to position yourself, what I believe is going to be a really big change in America. So, and so like if y'all hear background noise, I got a, I got a neighbor he cutting grass. It's right by the window. We'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossession, CBS News, the largest producer. Go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description just below the video, schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. So this is CBS News. The largest producer of fresh eggs in America said Tuesday that it temporarily halted production at a Texas plant after this was found in chickens, right? Now, this is also in Michigan. So this is in Texas and Michigan already as of today, 9.22 a.m. April 3rd. Then, AP News, largest fresh egg producer in the U.S. has found this in their chickens at Texas, right? Then, the largest fresh egg producer in the U.S. found it, right? This is everywhere. Now, what's shocking is what Daily Mail just came out and said, that they said, look at this. Well, there's no sign of person to person, they also said, it's a matter of when, not if. Like, it's a matter of when, not if, right? They said a development that would signal the start of a human, right? A human type problem. Then, a couple hours after they put that article out, New York Times says that someone's already been hit with it. Then, USA Today, two hours ago, someone's hit with it. Then, second person hit with it, right? So, you start to look at this, I mean, all of like the big, big, you know. And remember the trend back in CV, everybody was coming out with things at the same time, reporting on it, the same trend happening. That's what they're hitting on. So that's why they're saying, is it happening again? Remember, that was a test at first. Outlets that we're given information from are all telling us about this right now. They're all telling us, well, this is a while ago, so not this one. Just this one here, one day ago, right? You click on news. Let's see the last you know, 24 hours. Let's see how many outlets are talking about this. How many pages? You have 10 pages plus all talking about this situation. So in the last year, they were working on this solution. So that was when that was from. So you look at this. And then you kind of see this situation. They say that this problem would only 50% would make it. Over 50, just 50% would make it, right? Now, 
Am I saying that's what's going to happen? I'm definitely not, because we live in an uncertain world. Who knows what's going to happen? But what I am saying is going to happen at the very, very, very least is we are going to see massive supply chain disruptions globally, massive supply chain disruptions. And when there are supply chain disruptions, what happens? Prices go up because it's a race to who has the most money for that specific item, right? It's those willing to trade the dollars for the goods and services. And that's what we're going to be in. We're going to be in that type of world. So Washington Post, how prepared is the U.S. for this? This came out yesterday, right? came out yesterday. Then what I find very fascinating is how all of this works. So look at this they would have been doing a year ago. We're seeing a lot of people come to us that have never asked for help before, have never needed help before. So they run a food bank, right? They run a food bank. Now some food bank lines in big cities are, you know, wrapping around the block. They're wrapping around the block. They say statewide, we've been seeing a 30 plus percent increase in usage in pantries across the state of Maine. Speaking with different pantry leaders, we've got 20 plus, 25 plus in the county that we serve. Everybody's reporting increased usage. I mean, as much as 50% compared to what they would have been doing a year ago. We're seeing a lot of people come to us that have never asked for help before. They've never needed help. There's a lot of people that are in an absolute panic about how I'm going to do this. I'm showing that 56% of their county cannot make basic needs. So imagine supply chain disruptions, what this would do. Not to mention that millions of people have just relocated to America. Banking on America being a sound place to live with shelter, with job opportunities, with you know just a better life. That only happens if America is prosperous, if everything is good in America. If America walks through a world of uncertainty, imagine what those millions of people would be forced to do, right? The world would change radically. I'm not saying this to concern anyone, but factually, this is what is happening. For example, suburban food pantries experiencing record high demand three years after the pandemic. In the words of uh, Jared Salente, when people have nothing else to lose, they lose it, man. What's the itch? They mind. That's second edge is five right there. They're going to lose it. All self-control, yeah. go out the window, so on and so forth. Well, look, these are the beginning, beginnings of that. And I've seen I a like brother. It. You got us a lot yeah. No, like you like you bring out um that that um the elder Yashawama had had brought out. Uh what's that? Matthew Matthew 24 and 12. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, for the uh because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Yep. Um, what about again? Oh, yeah, this precept right here, the brother Taz got second address six and 22. And suddenly, shall the sown places appear unsown. Now, what's the sown places? That's where the farmers at. They ain't, look, they ain't producing nothing over the past couple of years. They ain't been producing. And look, what's in stores right now? That's last year's harvest. That's so if last year's harvest ain't enough, then what, what you think the next year leading up? so on and so forth going to be. So if these if these farmers complain that they don't have nothing growing, guess where you think food and restaurants get their stuff from? from? From the farmers. So if the farmers ain't got nothing, the food, the restaurants, stores, they not going to have nothing. So it says, 2nd Edge 6 and 22, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, and the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And like the brother, the other brother Bakwasha said, control demolition, pressure from above, pressure from below. He saw hitting on all sides, putting the people in straits. And that's how he going to cause all. And he just got to put you on the again team. No, he going to force the people by making their life hard, man, to depend on them. You see? But uh, that's that's pretty much it on that, uh, Elder Tizer Um Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. And we could probably end it right there. I was going to play this video from Josh Crossroads, but I ain't going to play it. It was put out two days ago. I'm going to throw it in the chat. So, brother, if y'all want to you know, do lessons on it. But uh, from Crossroads with Joshua Phillips. His title of his videos was that Americans was quietly assigned China-like social credit scores for episode. So I'm gonna throw all that in the chat. But other than that, other times apart, that's pretty much it. You know. Yeah, um, that was a pretty interesting video. You know. 
Because, um, right, and that also goes to show, man, uh, that China is behind a lot of this. All right, but yeah, that's that's going to that. The basically that's the credit score on steroids. And and that's the ultimate speaking as a dragon when they start that shit. Uh, that that uh, social credit system. That's when you really gonna see the beast speak as a dragon because it, it, this what we doing preaching this truth. We gonna have zeros. We ain't gonna be able to do shit in his society. That's why the Most High is gonna have to take care of us. You know, but any little thing, just like they were saying, if if uh, shit, if if your mama is a Baptist, that affects your your social credit. You know, your your girlfriend, she's Catholic. That's gonna you don't accept the Rainbow Mafia. That's gonna accept your uh, affect your credit score. And this is where all of this is going with with that. So that's a good video to check out. All right. But that that's showing you what they're trying to implement here in America. I mean, all you got to do is look. China is the model, and the 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 priest Karab Bad he, he he speak on that all the time. <clears throat> that I believe that was Klaus Schwab was was uh, bragging about China, and saying how they was the perfect example of what they want to uh, put in place for the entire world. So yeah, you if in other words, you got to go along with the narrative, or you won't be a part of this this beast system. All right, he calls it all, and then it says uh, also that that whoever would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and that this is exactly what they're trying to do. But yeah, that was it, brother. Kind of like you could, uh, you could take us out. Um, you won't. All right, sure. well, shoot, man. With with that, Akiyam, we pray that you all were edified in the message, and we're gonna give all praises, honor, and glory. All right, to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakudash, and double honors to the elders and apostles. All right, in whom we we receive this word through all right though honest you, you you can't give enough thanks man for the men that labored and tall you know and it all it all began with you how about shimmy i was of course and and then uh peace and blessings to the hundred and forty four thousand and the rest of the elect man all right shalom and have a thumb to you all god shalom the waterful tornado shalom, shalom.